On this video, I'm going to talk about sleep and sleep deprivation when it comes to knowing that you need to get enough sleep, but you have a small child that doesn't know that you need to get enough sleep. So as you know, sleep is so important to having peak performance, to feeling your best, to doing your best, to feel switched on. It has such a detrimental effect when your sleep is disturbed. And being able to curve the, the needs and wants of your youngster to find out, to dig deeper on what is making them wake up in the night is going to be really key to you getting enough sleep and also to your child getting enough sleep. But remember, the child can go off to sleep during the day. You're probably less likely to be able to do that with your work. And so there are just a couple of things. I'm sure that you will have spoken to your child. If they're at an age where they understand what you're talking about, you can get some feedback. You might ask them, what do you feel the reason is that you're waking up in the night? Are you scared of something? Do you need to have something? Do you need to be with us for some reason? So start having those kinds of conversations, not putting something into your head, but this is the sort of thing that you're wanting to find out. Now, if it is an anxiety thing, perhaps it's separation anxiety, they want to be able to see that you're there, that you're okay, then having some sort of strategy, perhaps you can have a photograph of yourselves that they can look at or they can draw a picture of you. If you've got a you know, pencil and some paper and they could draw you, what are the things that they need to have to make them feel more comfortable? Maybe it's a toy if they're scared. Could, could we go and find a toy that's going to make you feel more comfortable at night? If you wake up feeling a little bit, oh, you know, is there something in my room? If you had that protective toy with you, you could just grab hold of and you know that you'd be protective. Shall we go and find out what that toy is? And then you're going to be fine. And then just trying out and testing different things. Another thing to bear in mind is that something as simple, having a weighted blanket on your child will also help them to stay asleep. So not making the covers so light. Now, this can be harder in a hot climate and might not be appropriate at that time. But if you can have a, some kind of blanket on, some kind of cover that is weighted, and this is, goes for adults as well, it often helps the child to stay asleep. Another thing to think about is white noise. And you can buy white noise machines online. You can probably buy them locally to where you live. And it can be set to many different types of sound. So it might be birds singing. It might be waves. It might just be a shh kind of white, literally white noise. It's nothing. And there are different settings on the noise machine. So again, testing out which sound might keep your child asleep or when they do wake up, because remember, if they've been doing that, it's become a habit. And if they wake up in the night and there's something different, they hear something that's soothing. And maybe it is that waves rushing in, flowing in on the beach, flowing in and out. Maybe it is birds singing. What is that thing that's going to make them soothe and then just go back off to sleep again to get them out of the habit of waking up? And once you do that, the noise machine then doesn't have to be there anymore. It's just finding some way of getting them out of that habit so that you can get that ideal sleep. You can feel better. There's even a little attachment you can put on a door called a door monkey. And it allows the door to stay a little bit open. But if you attach it a little bit higher up the door so that they can't get their hands on it, it's just a little reminder that they're not to go out of their bedroom at night time. And as again, as they stop doing that, you can either bring it further down so they could remove it or you can literally just take it off and just leave the door ajar. So testing things, finding out what works is going to be really key for your situation, for your child. Here's one thing. 
mothers, fathers are going to have different opinions. And someone might say, oh, it's only going to be a short period of time. They'll grow out of it. You know, we need to embrace this. But then you're setting a rod for your own back and you're not getting the sleep, either of you, that you need to feel energized, to feel happy and joyful throughout the day. And that's what you need to have. If you are broken sleep, if you're being woken up, if your child is kicking and squiggling and wiggling in the night because they're popped into bed with you, it's not good. It's not good for the child. It's not good for you. So actually bring that back and give yourself that self-care because you need that sleep so that you can perform better as a parent through the day, feeling more energized. You're less likely to be snappy and lose your temper or get annoyed at something because you've had that seven, eight hours of sleep undisturbed. And look at the other video that I've done on peak performance with sleep and sleep hygiene because there will be some other things in there that you can look at and think, am I doing that? Is my child doing that? Is he coming off his devices or her devices? Is he stopping eating and drinking before bedtime by about two hours? And all of those sorts of things you can add in for a child as well. So there are some things you can use from the other video that you can also add on to this one. So I really hope that helps remembering that sleep is so important to your health, to your peak performance as not just somebody at work, but as somebody at home looking after your whole family. There'll be another video coming up on screen. So I'll see you over there. If you've liked this video, then do let me know and any comments will be very welcome. Take care. Bye for now.